The best bassists in the world don't just know a handful of songs, they know thousands. And they can play them at the drop of a hat. How do they do it? Hi, I'm Luke from Become a Bassist, and in this lesson I want to share with you the incredibly common chord sequences every bass player should have under their fingers and inside their ears. And not only are they simple to memorize once you know how, but once you do, you'll be able to play hundreds or even thousands of songs immediately. If I tallied up every single song I could play without needing to look at, you know, sheet music or tabs or a chart or a lyric sheet, anything like that, I'm not sure exactly how many I could play, but it's easily going to be the high hundreds, more than likely in the thousands. Now, <laughs> that is not because I have this like amazing memory or something like that. Like I can't even remember if I locked the car when I go to get the shopping. But you don't actually need a great memory to learn lots of songs. What you do need is to memorize the right things. And when it comes to learning songs, one of the most important things to learn are the chord sequences that pop up again and again and again. The ones that get repeated all the time. So, how do we do it? Now, when beginners go to learn songs, they're generally thinking in terms of, you know, the, the notes or the frets more than likely that they're playing. They'll be like, okay, third fret on the A string to fifth fret on the A string to, you know, whatever it happens to be. Um, or they might be thinking in terms of like, okay, so C going to D, going to E flat, whatever it is. But there is a much better way to think that makes things a lot easier to learn songs, and that's to think in terms of numbers with something called the Nashville number system. The Nashville number system is something that lets you remember notes by relating them to the key that you're in and the major scale from that key. So for example, if we're playing a song in the key of C major, what we do is we give each note of the C major scale a number. So C major is C, D, E, F, G, A, B, and C. So we get C is our one, D is two, E is three, F is four, G is five, A is six, and B is seven. And then of course, when you get to the top, eight or one, it's the same thing. Now I do have another video that goes deeper into the Nashville number system. So if you wanna get that a little bit more under your fingers, then check that out in the link up here or in the description. But this is what a ton of professional bassists will use to learn and play through so many songs comfortably in any key. They're using this system combined with their knowledge of common chord sequences. So get to know the common chord sequences and you can play a mountain of songs and change keys without hesitation. But right now though, let's look at our very first chord progression. Now I'm sure you've played or at least at the very least you've heard uh, some blues music in your life, right? You know, based largely upon three chords, the one chord, the four chord and the five chord. Now a big chunk of blues music is just a sequence of 12 bars. You know, that's why it's called the 12 bar blues. And it looks like this. So we're using the one chord, the four chord, and the five chord. Now we're in the key of C for this one. Uh, and for this you know, 12 bar blues pattern, this 12 bar blues sequence, we get four bars of the one chord. We get two bars of the four chord. We get two, bar two bars back on the one chord, then one bar of five, and then one bar of four and then two bars of the one chord right there. And we'll talk about those last two bars in a little second. Now, like I said, we are in the key of C, so if you wanna play that C on the A string and use that as your kind of home base, that would be right here. Uh, if you're looking for the four chord, you'd actually go you know, to the thickest string and down two frets, so you'd end up on the first fret on your E string, and then the five chord is just two frets up from there the third fret on the E string right there. So that's if you're basing everything from the A string. So this is our root, our A, and we're looking for the four and the five chord. If we were to start on the the E string though, the geometry changes just a little bit uh, and it'll look more like this. So our, obviously our one chord is gonna be on the E string, but if you're looking for the four chord, you stay on the same fret and go to your thinner string. So in this case, eighth fret on the E string to the eighth fret on the A string. And then to find the five chord, we just go up two frets from there. In this case, we end up on this G, 10th fret on the A string. So let's give this a try. Let's play along with this. Uh, and if you want the backing tracks for all the stuff I'm doing in this video, uh, there's a link in the description. You can download them all for free. Uh, but let's listen to our 12 bar blues. Here we go. Our one, two, three, four. So here's our one chord. It's two bars, two, three, and three. Remember we've got four bars, here's our last one. Two, three, to our four chord right there. That's our F chord. F, two, three, back to the one. Two, three, 
<laughs> down to the five chord. Five. Down to the four chord. And back to one, two, three, four. A oh, one, two, three, four. Now that's our like one round or one chorus of the 12 bar blues. Now I'm just playing long notes for this, just sticking with the root note, just to make things uh, super simple. Now sometimes there is some variation within the 12 bar sequence. Uh, for example, changing to the five chord on the last bar, instead of staying on the one, uh, you know, there's tons of things like that. But the 12 bar blues tends to stick to the one chord, the four chord, and the five chord, until you start getting into, you know, more harmonically adventurous jazz blues and all that kind of stuff. Now, there are tons more you can do with these kind of blues bass lines, but right now, just sticking to good old root notes, just to outline all the chords nice and simply. The good thing about the 12 bar blues is that it's great to just rock up at a jam session too and kind of go to town over a 12 bar blues. Uh, you've got tons of classic artists you can play along to, like the BB Kings and the Albert Lees, and uh, even more modern examples like uh, Duffy's Mercy or Christina Aguilera's Candyman. It's not like blues is like a thing of the past. It's still with us today. But we're gonna go a little bit further this time. We're gonna go to our second chord sequence, which is something I guarantee you've heard before. It's in songs like uh, U2's With or Without You, uh, So Lonely by The Police, Let It Be by The Beatles, uh, Country Roads, John Denver, Take On Me, you know, tons of songs. Uh, there was even a viral video you may have seen by a band called Axis of Awesome, where they sing, I think it's 47 different songs over this four chord sequence. So what is it? It is the one, one, five, six, four progression. This is one of the most recognizable chord sequences around. It's something you hear in pop music over and over again. Uh, so songs like, uh, let's stay and see. And I can't live mm, with or without you. Uh, what was the other one? Um, and find myself in times of trouble, Mother Mary comes to me. Uh, take on me, take on me. You know, there's tons of songs that use this particular progression. Uh, now, when Axes of Awesome do it, I think they actually play the song in the key of D, which makes our one chord a D chord. So we're using D major. So our one chord is D, our five chord is A. Our sixth chord is B minor, and our fourth chord is G right there. But like we've been saying before, using our number system, we don't need to remember those specific note names. We can just remember one, five, six, and four in the key of D. Your one is gonna be, uh, let's start on the A string right here. Fifth fret of the A string right here. Your five, are, or your A, the actual note, is gonna be right here, the fifth fret on your E string. So same fret, just down to your thicker string. Your B is gonna be right here on the uh, seventh fret, right there. Two frets up from where the last chord was. And then our G, or our four chord, is gonna be on the same string down one, two, three, four frets. So hold on, one, two, yeah, that's right. <laughs> that's the right number of frets, right there. So that's the geometry if you're starting on the uh, A string. If your root happens to be on the E string though, it's gonna look more like this. So you're gonna start on this D right here. You're gonna go up to your thinnest string and up two frets. So this is gonna be your five chord here. Then from there to get to our sixth chord, just go up two frets. And then same thing to get from our sixth chord to our four chord, go down one, two, three, four frets right there. And we get the same exact thing, D, A, B, G. So let's pull up another backing track real quick and just practice playing along to that sequence. I'm just gonna play root notes just to keep things nice and simple. Here we go. A one, two from the E string. Again, a, sh a sound I'm sure you've heard before. Let's start on the A string this time. Same thing. Yeah? Again, something I'm sure you've heard before. One of the best things about this progression is that if you know it, then you already know another chord progression that gets used almost just as much. It's kind of like the sad sister of the one, five, six, four. And all you have to do is start in a different place. That makes our third chord sequence the six, four, one, five. Now the reason it's the kind of the sad sister is because we're starting on the sixth chord. 
yeah, the minor chord. So starting on a minor chord, you know, makes things feel a bit more melancholy, a bit sadder. And you hear this progression in uh, the chorus of Toto's Africa. Um, da -da 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 away from you. Don't know the words. <laughs> uh, you know, um, Zombie by the Cranberries. Uh, in your head, in your head. So, okay, I'll, I'll, I'll save you from more of that, more of my singing. But you know, uh, Alice Cooper's Poison, uh, Apologize by uh, One Republic, uh, Scott McKenzie's San Francisco, you know, tons of songs based on this kind of chord progression. But let's pull up another backing track. It's the same exact chords, just in a slightly different order. And we'll stay in the same key, same key so you can just hear the subtle difference. So our 6415 is gonna sound more like this. One, two, three, four. That's our four chord. One, five, If you wanted to play it up there, oh, you'd probably do the same thing. Dun, boom. Yeah. Six, four, one, and five, the same exact thing, just in a slightly different order, changes the kind of dynamics of that progression, right? Next, we have our one, six, four, five. Now, this is a sequence that you hear in like classic love songs, doo wop songs of the 50s, shows up all over kind of music history. Uh, one of the probably most iconic examples is Stand By Me uh, by Benny King. Um, what will I want? Oh, I'll do the chorus. The darling, darling, stand by. It's one chord, do, stand, six chord, ba, me. Oh, it's a high voice. Four chord, stand by me. Five chord, stand by me. I think it's in that key. Man, that's high. <laughs> didn't think, didn't realize that before. Um, the, uh, the Righteous Brothers, Unchained Melody, that's another example as well. Again, you find this all over the shop. If you're thinking about the geometry of this one, uh, let's go back to the key of C for this. So obviously our um, root's gonna be on that C right there, the third fret on the A string. To find the six, you go back down to your thickest string and then up two frets. So in this case, we get the fifth fret on the, the E string, that A right there. Then we go down one, two, three, four frets, down to our four chord, and then to find our five chord, we just go up two frets from there. Right there, so we get C, A, F, and G right there. Um, if you were on the on the E string, if you wanted to base everything from the E string right here, you do the same exact thing. They have, uh, you know, if you're starting on the, the root there, the one chord, you go to our A string, our next uh, higher string, and go up one, two, three, four frets. Same exact thing as we had down there, just in a different kind of, uh, you know, displacing that up there. And then we do the same thing to, that we did down low, we go down one, two, three, four frets, and then up two frets to get our five chords. So we get one, six, four, five right there, or one, six, four, five. That's too low for me. <laughs> Just like that though. If we play this one with the track, it'll sound like this. Oh. And that's our six chord, six chord, down to the four chord, and up to the five chord, back to the one chord. Yes, those are our, that's our sequence. One, actually we go one, we go up to the six chord, up high, six, then back down to the four chord, four, and back up to the five chord, and back to the one chord, right there, and that's, you know, basically Stand By Me and, you know, hundreds of other songs as well. Our final chord sequence is one that you hear pop up across all kinds of styles of music, but especially in jazz. It's the 2-5-1, the 2-5-1. Uh, you hear it in jazz standards like Autumn Leaves or Satin Dole, but it's also in more modern songs as well, like Sunday Morning by Maroon 5. And that's actually a really good example because the 2-5-1 sequence is basically the whole song and it also stays in one key. So it's like 2-5-1 overload. Now, if you're thinking about the 
geometry of this particular one. If your one chord is on the E string, and let's keep keep everything back in C, good old faithful, uh, then everything kind of falls around right here. Our two chord is our kind of starting place. This is a bit different because so far everything else has just been starting on one essentially. But we're starting on two right here. So if our two chord is right here, then our five chord is gonna be on the same fret, just up on the next higher sounding string. So in this, in this case, we have 10th fret on the E string going to 10th fret on the A string. And to find our one chord, all we do is go back down to our original string and then down two frets. So from the 10th fret, we go down here, down two frets. There we go. So two, five, one. So 10th fret, 10th fret, 8th fret right there. If you're basing everything around the A string, then things are a bit different. Uh, our two chord is the fifth fret on this uh, A string right here, but we're gonna go down to our, uh, our five chord, and we're gonna do that by going you know, lower sounding string or whatever you call this direction. Some people call this up because it's towards the sky. Some people call it down because you're going down in whatever it is, doesn't matter. <laughs> but we get the, the two chord, we go that direction and then down two frets right there. And then we can stay on the same fret and just go back up to our original string. And that's our one chord, two, five, one. Now it doesn't matter too much which one you use, whether it's two, five, one, starting on the E string or two, five, one, starting on the A string. As long as you've got the you know good sounds coming out of your bass, that's all that matters. Now, as always, we've got a track here to play along with that just uses the two, five, one the whole way through. It's gonna sound like this. Again, let's just keep it to two, three root notes. Two, three, four, five, root. So two, five, one, two, three, four, two chord, five chord, one chord. Again, try singing the chord progression as well. Two, five, one. It helps to get in the ear as well as the fingers, right? Let's start on the, the A string. Two, five, one. Very low for me. One more. Two, five, one. So that's it. That's the two, five, one, geometrically speaking. Now, the more comfortable you get with these chord sequences, the better chance you'll have to recognize them in the wild and you'll be able to learn songs faster and faster and lock in, you know, quicker and quicker. So if you want to get really familiar with these sequences so you can play, you know, hundreds or even thousands of songs, you can download the backing tracks uh, from free from becomebass.com. There's a track for each sequence we covered today and I've even included everything you've seen in this video as a PDF. It's got all the diagrams, chord sequences. It's all in there for you. So just head to the link in the description or click right here fill out the form on that page and I'll see you in that PDF and those tracks and I'll see you there.